Hey, what's going on everybody? So today I'm going to show you how to set up a Ubiquiti Edge Router X from scratch for use with your home network. So first off, the Edge Router X is not like your typical home router that you would buy from Walmart or Target or whatever. You can't just bring it home, plug it into your modem, and then your desktop and everything be good to go right out of the box. It requires just a tiny bit of configuration in order for it to work on your home network. And this is because it's a business class device. It's usually bought by businesses or hotels or whatever that have specific configuration needs. Just a regular home router configuration isn't gonna work for them so it needs to be flexible and able to do a lot of different things that you wouldn't typically see inside your house. That being said, it is super simple to get running. It's just not plug and play. So first off, the router I'm gonna use in this video is just the regular Edge Router X, not the SFP version. So if you don't know the difference between the regular five port Edge Router X and the six port Edge Router X SFP, the, the regular Edge Router X only has the copper ports and it is only able to accept power over ethernet and pass it through. It doesn't create it itself. The Edge Router X SFP has one additional SFP port, which is in the name and it is also capable of producing power over ethernet to power other devices so if you have an sfp lying around you can actually power this regular edge router x with your edge router x sfp now it does come with a power brick in the box which is probably what you'll be using if you don't have any injectors or another edge router laying around in your network so first thing you want to do is plug it in obviously the second thing you want to do is you want to connect a computer to port eth0 so there's five ports on the front of this router which are labeled eth or ethernet 0 1 2 3 and 4. 0 is going to be your setup interface and it's also going to be your typical internet interface so on your regular routers you would see at walmart where you have your internet and then lan ports eth0 is going to be your internet port and 1 2 3 and 4 are going to be your lan ports you'll also notice on the front of it that eth0 is your poe in port so if you have an injector you'd plug the power in there and eth4 is your out port so if you have poe going in ethernet 0 it can send it right back out ethernet 4 to power another downstream device now it only supports 24 volt passive poe please don't plug anything emitting power into one two or three it'll probably mess it up haven't tried it i don't want to gamble with my money so once you have your computer connected to ethernet 0 you're going to want to configure your ip settings on your computer so on Windows 10, the way we do that is we go down, click on the little computer thing, internet and settings. And then on the left side, you're gonna see ethernet. On the right side, there's a link to change adapter options. You're gonna double click on your ethernet interface, go to properties, find internet protocol version four and double click on it. Now you should be set to obtain an IP address automatically. We wanna change this to use the following IP address. And you're gonna type in 192.168 dot one dot two this is because the edge router management interface is 192.168.1.1 which you will type in as the default gateway and we just hit ok back out of that window and ok on that window now leave the rest of this pulled up because we're going to have to change this as soon as we're done configuring it so open up your web browser and just type 192.168.1.1 into the bar and it's going to give you a certificate error just if you're in chrome go to advanced continue anyway however you get past that just go straight past it that doesn't matter and you're going to type in the default username and password which is ubnt and a password of the same thing ubnt this brings you to your router's home page and it should ask you if you want to start with a basic set of wizard you do want to do this this is the easiest way now on some older firmware versions if for some reason you were unlucky and you got an edge router with I want to say it was prior to version 1.6 or something like that. It didn't ask you, at least the ones I got that were an older firmware, they didn't ask for a basic, basic setup right out of the box. So if they don't, there's a different process for that and just leave that in the comments below and I'll try to help you out with that. But before you do that, just try resetting the router, which is just holding a paper clip into the reset hole on the back for roughly 10 seconds and that should set it back to an official default config. Now here in the basic setup wizard, you have a few options Options. you're not really gonna need to change any of them to make it work but I'm just gonna go through them here so the top box says internet port you get to select which one you're gonna want to use as the internet you only have two options and it's zero or four 
So we're gonna leave that on zero. Internet connection type, if you have specific internet connection options, you'll put them in here. Most home internet connections are just DHCP. And then you have your one LAN checkbox. So this just means you're only gonna have one network that you're servicing. Like I said, this router's business class, it can service many different networks on different ports. So we're gonna leave that checked for home use. And under the LAN ports configuration, this is where you set up your network address. Just leave this default if you don't have a preference or if you don't know anything about network addressing, but there's the option there if you do want to change that. And make sure enable DHCP server is checked. It is by default. Keep it that way. And the bottom is just user setup. Now, once this basic setup wizard runs, it's going to create a basic firewall, so you're not going to have outside access anyway, but it's a good idea to change the default username and password just for the sake of security. If for some reason it was to open up to the internet and you had UBNT, UBNT on there, people could just take control of your router anytime they want, as long as they know your IP and were able to access it. So I highly recommend changing this, but for the purpose of this video, we're just going to leave it the same with a different password. All right, and then you click apply. It'll, ask, it'll say that it's gonna reboot the router and it gives you the directions down here, connect the client device to one of the LAN ports, which is gonna be one, two, or three, or four, since ETH0 is our internet interface, and set the client device to use DHCP. And then use a the browser to go to 192.168.1.1 or whatever address you put under the LAN port configuration. So we're just gonna hit apply changes and reboot. It's gonna ask if I'm sure, yes, I'm sure and it's gonna reboot the router. So at this point, while it's rebooting, you can move your PC connection from ETH0 to ETH1 and plug in your modem into ETH0. Now don't do this if you're using a PoE injector for whatever reason, because as soon as you unplug ETH0, it's going to cut power if that's the only way it's powered. Once that's all plugged up, you can go back into your interface configuration. So click on your ethernet interface, properties, find IPv4, double click, and just change that and the DNS server settings back to automatic. Click OK, OK, and we can close out of all those windows now. And we can also click reload on our routers page and it should refresh our dashboard. There we go. If it didn't load for you, you might not have a IP address yet. So one thing you can do is open up command prompt by typing CMD into your start bar, do IP config space slash release, and then IP config space slash renew. This will tell your computer to ask for a brand new IP address. And there we go. That's just how you verify and force it to get a new address if it didn't before. I'm going to log in with UBNT and I changed the password to password and we're back on the dashboard here. Now it took me straight back into basic setup because I hit the reload button. So let's just go back to the main page, which is the dashboard tab. And let's also open up another website just to see if the internet is working. Let's go to walmart.com. Boom. There we go. We have internet now. All right. So now that we see it's working, that's mostly what we need to do, but there is one more step that I like everybody to do because it actually ups the performance of this thing. So go up to the top right hand corner of your dashboard, click CLI, it's gonna bring up a command line interface. Now, if you're scared of this, don't be, it's real easy here. Just type in your login, which is UBNT and password for me. It's gonna bring you to this kind of user mode thing. We're gonna type in configure and now we enter configuration mode. Now what you wanna type in here is set system offload hw nat enable and then hit enter and we'll also do set system offload ipsec enable these are the only two offloading commands that the edge router x supports at least that i know of and what this does is it allows your router to offload the NAT process into hardware instead of trying to do it through its processor, which improves its performance dramatically. If you want to learn more about the kind of performance difference that makes, check out my other video where I actually test the throughput of the edge router with all of these various options enabled and disabled. But this is something that you definitely want to have on. Now, after you've typed those in, just type commit. Uh, the, the dashboard is going to freak out. It's going to say the configuration's changed. Refresh. So just refresh the page. Your command line will stay up. And then type in save into your command line and enter. And then at that point, we can just exit out of the command line. And that is everything you need to do to set up the Edge Router X as your home network router. It's a little bit more than a Walmart router, but it's really not that much to do. It's nothing to really be afraid of. Just don't go in here willy-nilly trying to change a whole bunch of settings because there is a lot that you can screw up with this. Also, another thing to note, and this is just from personal experience, um, usual home routers have the reset button, and it doesn't matter if you hold it down just to kind of reset it back to factory default just because most people run them in factory default mode anyway. If you hold down the reset button on this thing, it's going to wipe all of the configurations and set it back to default like normal, except for with this one, it won't work 
in the normal configuration. I actually had somebody do that. They were like, y'all, well, I needed to set it back to factory default because it wasn't working. I was like, no, you, you just wiped its ability to work. So please don't do that if you're used to consumer devices and the reset button. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something and I hope you get your Edge Router X off the ground and running really fast. And thanks for watching.